Welcome back. We are ready for the last session. AS 2023 is not over yet. Maybe we have saved the best for last. Maybe not. <laughs> we will know in an hour and a half. Please be seated, everybody. People are running. So, the big question is, how do we get multi-purpose halls to sound great? Is it possible at all? Or will it, as Henrik Müller states in his abstract, be a no-purpose space instead. Uh, this uh, session will start with Henrik Müller from Akukon. Henrik speaks how many languages? Four fluently. He speaks Danish, my language, <laughs> Finnish, Swedish, English, and a few more. Yeah. I think that Henrik has a sound effect on people. Please give a very, very warm welcome to Henrik Müller. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, I suppose something should happen if I press this one. Ah, we should. Yeah. So first, um, my name is Henrik, as was stated. I'm from Akokon. I'm, I'm based in Finland. Our company is based in Finland, the Baltics, Georgia, Kazakhstan, and Israel. So we have sort of like spread all over. Um, I have made a living out of designing uh, multi-purpose halls, more or less, with a few concert halls and a few opera houses here and there, but mainly my main passion is, is, is multi-purpose halls. So, for, of course, what's, what is a multi-purpose hall? That's typically the, the question. Well, you should be asked the other way. Which space is not actually on a multi-purpose hall? You've all seen the famous pictures of Musikverein with the dancers in the middle where they remove the chairs and it's turned into a dancing venue. Well, that's a multi-purpose hall, right? Um, the, 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 problem, the problem is, that with, with the multi-purpose hall I'll be talking about today, the, the, the issue is that most of them are the only performance space in the community. So they have to cater for everything. We're not like America or China where you can build a multi-purpose house if you have three houses and a common toilet, then you can build an opera house, right, in China. But, but not, we, we can't do that. We don't have enough people. We, we, have, we have small amounts of people. We have a small amount of money, so we have to build one hall which will fit everything. And that's, of course, sometimes the project, the problem. And then the other issue is that often these halls, they are, uh, they are presented, they're, they're designed for classical music, even though classical music or acoustic music is actually the thing which is least, it's least used for. So for this, I'll concentrate between three and 900 seats. Um, they often have a bad reputation, right? But that's actually pretty much from these gigantic halls that were built in the 50s, early f f starting from the 40s and onwards. And the basic problem here is that you have a hall with 2,500 seats, up to 3,000 seats, fan-shaped, where the orchestra is playing basically in an opera stage house with some kind of reflectors around them. And no, that's not going to sound very good, that's for sure. So that's basically where it comes from. A lot of the small multi-purpose halls built today, they're actually quite okay. So these are typically not very good. So why do we need them? Well, it was in the 60s, there was the French Minister of Culture who said that he wanted to uh, have a, excuse my French, maison de la culture for every province city in France with the idea that it's the right of every ch French children to, uh, to be able to enjoy music, arts, pictures, and, and so on. So th that one didn't sort of like go forward, they didn't build them all, but, uh, but uh, that's sort of like the basic idea. The, the basic thing is, if you want that one, you need the other one, right? 
So you need some place where the kids will start playing the music, um, or in my case, start mutilating a guitar. Um, yes, I used to have a blue band like this and play, play new wave music. This was, well, that's a sight. Anyway, so you need, you, <laughs> so you, need, you need to have the places where you can start playing if you want to have the professional orchestras, which we all like. You need to have the place where you have the first theater performance in order to get the guys to go to Hollywood. So the typical usage of these, and this is not what is as a definition by the client, but this is what we have found is the typical usage. So it's, it's very much conferences, presentations, reinforced music a lot. I mean, if you check um, how many people go to a classical concert, if it's a really popular classical concert, yeah, you can fill a concert hall with, with 1,000 people. I just saw, um, what's her name, um, Swift. She played in the United States, 70,000 people. Um, so th and that's pretty much the same thing. You have a, a popular band playing, it's, you'll sell the tickets. You have the, uh, an excellent string quartet and you'll have a hard time getting the hall filled. So, reinforced music, quite often films. In Norway, they have a system where you have to have a movie theater uh, in the cultural house. Um, uh, if there's any Norwegian, it's correct me, but it's, it's like you have, typically you have a big hall, which can also be used for movie theaters, and the, uh, for movies, and then you have a smaller hall, which is a dedicated cinema hall. Um, you will have theater, quite often a children's theater. Um, you, you will have acoustic music now and then, there will be somebody there playing, uh, playing um, uh, a, a piano every now and then. In my local culture house in, 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 in Sibbo in Finland, we have uh, 150,000 worth, uh, euros worth of Steinway. Unfortunately, it very seldom uses it, and it's only tuned when I'm there for, a con for doing a concert and I say, you've got to tune this one first. And then you'll have banquets and other kinds of things. By the way, I have, um, for each slide, I have Little text and a lot of pictures, because I like pictures. So this is uh, from a house in northern Finland, or rather northern Finland, in Kyrovesi. So what are the design considerations? And notice now, I'm not, this is not really acoustics. The first thing is safety, because you have non-professional users using these holes. You cannot have, say, oh, it's quite easy, you climb on top of a seven meter high ladder and you can, you can aim the lights. That's not possible. You don't have professional people to do that. You don't have theater professionals to run it. Then, to load in and load out. If you cannot get the show onto the stage, what's the point of having a stage? You need to be able to load it in and load it out. And I said, the performance systems is much be system which can be used by non-professional non users. Right? It's not a, if you have like the Yamaha desk you have back there, great desk. If it's not programmed, every time you come in there, you start from scratch. There is no one in the community that will be able to use it. Right? So it's not a good idea. Uh, you have to audience access. When you go to the concert, typically, you'll put on a you know, nice dress, a tie. You'll go there and you'll expect to be able to, in the intermission, you'll expect to be able to go and get a glass of champagne and go to the toilet. If there's too long queues for the bars and too long queues for the toilet, it doesn't matter if the corridors were good, it's a shitty house, right? So it's, you, you are, well, all this, and yeah, well, the acoustics, yeah, you, we'll get to that, but that's actually the easiest part of it. Um, so just to sh scare anybody who has never done a multi-purpose hall, that's just a part of a list of the equipment you need to design in there. And that's just partial, it's, it's, I don't have all the details in there. But just to give you an idea, all of this stuff you need in the hall in order to be able to make a performance. If you don't have a lighting system, you cannot make a theater. Well, you can make a theater, but it'll be quite, it won't be that, that much fun. And so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So, acoustics. Well, we should talk about that, I suppose, being an acoustic conference. So, the first um, one thing which is, it's, it's often so that you go in and you do the room acoustics and oh la la, it's fantastic. But then you realize that you have a cafe outside and the doors are shit and you cannot put the coffee cups in the cafe at the same time as you have a show inside. So it's like you need to, and that's the more, the more complicated part often. So you need to start out by, by making sure you have not excellent sound isolation. We don't need to like make everything into a floating box if it's not necessary, but you need to have sufficient sound isolation. And you need to have systems which are, ventilation systems, etc., which are sufficiently quiet. It doesn't mean it has to be NR10 in all cases. It could be, uh, that doesn't make any sense because your lamps will normally be, make more noise than that. But you need to have sufficiently quiet so that you're not sitting in the hall listening to the music and all, and all you hear is bzzz, 
that doesn't work. It's very monotonic piece of music. I don't know who wrote it. Then the about the ac acoustics. Well, you need variability, but you can also ask the question: Is it possible to make? Can can we make a compromise for this one? Like if we have 95 percent where you we're using loudspeakers, 95 percent of the performance we're using light, loudspeakers, two percent are banquets, and the rest is acoustic music. Could we make a compromise where this hall would not be really great for acoustic music, but it'll be great for everything else? Or do we actually need to have the complicated sort of like variable things? So the problem with the variable surfaces is that they're quite often, they're very difficult to use. So, so you, you won't use them. Many of the halls I walk into in Finland, I see the variable surfaces in exactly the same position which I left where I left them 10 years ago. So they're not used, right? Um, yeah, from Lithuania. So if you look, there are some standards. There's the DIN standard and the, the, this ISO uh, 23591 for, uh, um, for rehearsal halls or for rehearsal music. Where was this one? It was laser. So what you can see here is you have the loud music or amplified music, sorry, here. So it requires lower than the loud acoustic or quiet acoustic music. But loud acoustic music in this case uh, could be thought of, that would be like the horns or the, like the brass bands. And in many cases they say, well, it doesn't really matter, it's okay if the brass band is, if it's a little more born damped in there. So it, I, my argument is that it is actually possible to find a sensible compromise here without necessarily going to, or, it's, it's, or with a limited amount of variability, it is possible to, to get something that will work here. It won't be very good for string quartet. But in many cases, you have a church which have wonderful acoustics for, for string quartets. So, variability schemes. I don't know, this is something, I, I call them flip-flops, because you open them and close them. Um, these are the ones that are normally in the same position where you left them 10 years ago, because they are difficult. You have to run and turn everyone manically, or then somebody have the expansion where you have the mechanics, uh, which breaks. And, but, the, but you have to turn them, and in many cases they are so high up that even I can't get to them. So how do the other people get to them? Then they, what we normally use is, is the curtains. This is the curtain layout from a hall in, in Jakobstad in Finland, so you have side curtains here, but even more important, you have the, the top curtains here, and they are much more important in many ways, because they will actually reduce the volume they'll take out acoustic volume from the hall. So they are actually more efficient at low frequencies than current to normal be. Then you also have, you need the curtains on the back wall because your loudspeakers are aiming at the back wall. You don't want that to talk back to you. So that's the basic like layout of, of, the, of, the, of, of the curtains. That you can have variable volume as well, which is really cool. It's, I mean, in Stavanger concert house, we have the, the whole ceiling is moving, I think, six meters up and down. It weighs 160, 120 tons. And it's so cool. I mean, it's so cool you can move it up and down. It's also quite expensive. <laughs> but it's really cool. We acousticians love it. <laughs> then you have what Fabio will be talking about later. You, you have, the, well, electronics maybe not that bad. I had a friend of mine who's the bass player for... Um, for uh, Lachtis uh, Philharmonics, and they went to do a, uh, a show in a small hall we just designed, which is a black box theater. And they said, how's the acoustics? And they said, dreadful. Ask the guy to get some microphones. So they actually re just reinforced it a little bit. And it, said, it, sounds, it sounded right. Everybody thought, this sounds quite nice. It's not, not like big reinforcement, just you know, a little bit of boost. Add a, they had surround speakers in there. Add a little bit of boost, add a little bit of reverberation. It doesn't sound right, but it sounds good. So variability, the problem with variability is also you need to make sure it's not enough that you have a lot of surfaces you can change around. This is two holes in Finland. You can see a very large variability in, in Kosamo. The problem is that this is supposed to be the rock and roll setting. And that doesn't really work. Whereas in, in Lieksa, uh, you're within the just noticeable difference of, of measurement. So. And again, if you see, if you have acoustic surfaces only in the auditorium, this is the percentage change, this is six different halls, the amount of percent um, of reverberation time you change, so it's not really that much. But if you add curtains to the stage, if you take the stage curtain into account, then all of a sudden things start happening, because then you're basically you're damping the, the sound source, you're, you're reducing the level of the sound source if you have a lot of curtains on the stage. So that'll be better. So what is the solution? Well. 
we should, I mean, I shouldn't be saying this, but I actually, I actually think that you, we should start thinking about more, like, can we do a compromise and not do so much variability? Do we really need all the variability? And again, why make a chamber music hall if you're going to use it for rock and roll concerts? It doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, we still need some variability, yeah. But again, remember, if you have, if you spend 60, 70, in some cases with a flip-flop, 100,000 euros for the variability, and what you get is the same, like in, what you get is what we saw from Lieksa. It's not really worth the money. So it's, you have to think about how, what do I do and how do I do it, and is it really efficient? So, so what's the list to do? Make a prioritized list of usage of the hall. Have a long discussion with the users first. Because they normally don't want, oh, we want a concert hall. We would like this to be good for symphony orchestra and for big choirs, okay? Where do you have a symphony orchestra? Oh, we have one in the city next to the door. Where is that? 250 kilometers away. Great. So do you want to really make this hall for symphony orchestra? Um, so have that discussion where you will need to be quite, you need to be quite, how should you say, not, nev not nasty, but you need to ask questions of what do you actually want to do in there. Um, that's the first thing. And then if you do a variability, if you do acoustic variability, make sure that you do something which is easy to use and which is cost efficient. So in my opinion, curtains is more or less the only way. There are other ways. There's uh, Flex Acoustic who has this uh, balloons you, uh, hanging under the ceiling and stuff like that. That's, very, that's one of the few ways you can, you can change reverberation times in, um, at, at low frequencies and stuff like that. But make sure you have something which is actually so easy that people can use it. And easy people to use it, that means that you cannot be, in, like in Tampertalo, they had a system and it took eight, we, we, we changed it once. And it was, we were eight of us and it took us two hours to change from, from, um, from reverberant or reverberant to non-reverberant. Eight, per, eight persons, two hours. That's not going to be used very often. So it's important that, that you, when you do it, make sure it's easy to use and it actually does something. In Tampere Talo, it didn't do something. After we me measured, they'd cut the wires and just left them there. Um, and make sure that all the logistics, again, I mean, anybody who's, yeah, anybody who's, who's, who's doing sound or, or, or light or anything in a hall like this will tell you, when you come to the hall and the first thing that meets you is three flights of staircases, you basically want to go home, right? You do not want to drag your stuff up there. And yeah, you can have an elevator, but elevators do have tendencies of breaking down. So perhaps it's a good idea to have a backup as well. So make sure that the logistics is, that it's easy for people to do stuff there. I mean, it's, it sh that should be clear. And then also, uh, don't buy an extremely expensive system with all kinds of wimbles and dimples and, and whatever if nobody can use it, right? I mean, for, for 10, 15 years, I was the official AV guy in our city because I was basically the only one who knew how the system worked, right? So whenever they had a concert, I said, can you come and mix this for us, sir? Right? So, so that's, you have to make something which is usable for the people who's using it, right? So, because then after you do this, then you can have all the fun. And this is the same hall in three different conditions. And these two are actually taken with two, two hours in between. So this is the opening night of the Verkateras. At first, there was a concert with Oli Mustonen and his band played a classic concert. Then we went out for one and a half hours to have drinks. And then we came back, and then the Rasmus had a, a two and a half hour gig. So they this was a bit of a bragging by them. They wanted to show that we can do this. But in one and a half hour, they changed from a classical orchestra staging to having the Rasmus on stage, including sound check. So, and then they also use it for for, the, I, I don't know, this political party or something like that. But this is basically the typical things you will have. There. In this case, they have, they have a lot of concerts in, the, in that hall as well. Um, but um, but um, still, this is the sort of like, this is the purpose, right? To have all the fun. So thank you very much. For those of you who's interested, I've, there's, I don't know if, if you're going to have the slides, if the slides are going to be somewhere, but there's three articles which goes more into depth about the kind of changeable acoustics, et cetera. Right, thank you very much.